Well, thank you so much, UXSA, for inviting me. I'm Julie Jensen to present and talk about powerful portfolios. I also wanted to really thank Aquent for bringing this event together. It's really been a delight to work with both the Aquent folks and UXSA. I would consider you all to be just absolute logistical and design geniuses. And I really appreciate the opportunity to share some of my expertise and thoughts with folks who are local and around the world around portfolios. So who am I? I'm Julie Jensen. I'm currently the Vice President of User Experience at Frost Bank here in San Antonio, Texas. A little bit about my background. I consider that top tier there are the kind of my Seattle days. I helped launch and, and optimize Amazon business, really establishing an entire new segment for Amazon uh, companies that were bought, that had employees who were buying products on Amazon. Really had to think about what enterprises and small companies needed to really understand their spend and how their employees were buying things on the platform that everyone loves at Amazon. At Microsoft, my team launched their first cloud service, Office 365. And at Boeing, I'd like to say that I worked on the largest device in the world, the passenger cabin. We were working on the design of the chairs and the lights. It was really the first opportunity I had to design physical things, not just virtual websites and applications. That, third, that middle tier there is really the financial services work that we've done, that I've done. Really, really focused on not just typical transactions at the banks, but really trying to help people understand their finances. Lots and lots about designing and researching for the right customers and building the right products for them. That last piece there is a little bit different. At the wrap sheet, I helped and taught prisoners how to create and publish a newsletter every month. So imagine uh, your target audience are prisoners. It's a little bit different of a mindset working with them. At Los Alamos National Laboratory, I launched one of their first websites. But in addition to that, I also got to run their, lab their train that took plutonium from one lab to another lab. That was pretty exciting. And then Rock Wrecker is really kind of a side gig that I'm on where I'm trying to help people break from your mental ruts. So when you get caught maybe in a lack of confidence or the imposter syndrome and just need to get out of that mindset and that thinking, that's what I'm doing on this side. You'll see a little bit of that, hopefully, today. And with that, let's really get into the idea and the process of publishing your portfolio. It's essentially a five-step process. Maybe you're in that step of really not sure where to go and, and promising to get started. So what does that mean? You may be asking yourself, do I even need a portfolio? And I will tell you that I think a portfolio, establishing and creating and thinking through the process of a portfolio is an incredibly valuable uh, process for yourself. You get to think about what's important to you, what you're passionate about, and establish your own story. So whether you're a designer, you're a researcher, or a writer, or a developer, or even a data scientist, I think it's really important to think about how you present your work in a way that's great for you, but also the people that you're interviewing with. So do you need a portfolio? I would argue that you really do. And in fact, if you think about it, interior designers and architects and contractors, they all have a portfolio. They have a way of showcasing and showing off their work. So you should too. So the second step is really thinking about the structure that you wanna have. But I'll tell you that pondering about it is not enough and planning is not enough either. You are charged with really plotting your portfolio. And I like this word because it means that you're kind of being a little devious and you're thinking through how that portfolio best represents you and is going to help you land that interview 
and that job. So think about it a little bit sneaky, if you will. So you're thinking about all of the different options and how to showcase your work the best way possible. One of the first things to do is to really think about your passions. What is it that you absolutely love doing? Write those things down. Think about the full breadth of tools, methods, skills in each of these categories, especially around your passions. What are the things you love to do? What are your natural strengths? Things that you can do almost without even thinking about it. So you're not bothered doing them. And then what are your additional skills? What are the things that you can do with a little bit of effort versus the things on the right? Apathies, things that you've done that you never want to do again. Trust me, I have some of those things that I don't ever tell anyone that I'm interviewing with or anyone that I'm working for that I actually have that expertise. I never want to do any of those things again, mostly database administration types of things. What are the opportunities for things that you would like to do and would be an intriguing growth opportunity, but you just haven't done them yet? Think about those things. What are your disdains, things that seem to be really, really interesting that people want that you are not interested in? When you think holistically about the things that you love to do, the things that you enjoy doing, and those that you're not interested in, you actually start to formulate and plot your story just a little bit more effectively so that you can get this, the job that you really, truly want. The next piece is really pulling together your work samples. So go back to those passions, those natural inclinations, those things that you can do, and think about in the additional skills and think about pro which projects you have that match those three areas. This is where you're really aligning what you love to do um, with the work that you actually have. Hopefully, you can start to identify where the, you may have a gap and you may need to find a project that really, really conveys the things that you're passionate about. Think about what those gaps are and make sure that you can have work samples that match them. Some people will discover that their portfolio and the things that the design assets that they have are really just more convenient, things that they've worked on. But the things that they've worked on don't actually match what their passions are. So this is the opportunity to really be mindful and sit down and match your work and your work samples to those passions. Is there a gap there? And think about how to close that gap. I'll tell you that there are multiple opportunities. There are companies uh, that are begging for some help. And I bet that UXSA, if you're at local and in San Antonio, or even if you're working remotely and can reach out and volunteer, there are companies that would be willing and excited to give you that opportunity to get that passion project because it's a skill that you really want to try out and showcase. So you may just need to do a little bit of outreach to find those opportunities. Next, it's really perfecting the projects and how you present them. So if you take that one passion project, that work sample that you have, and really think about how you tell your story. What was the title of it? What type of project was it? What was the challenge? Was, the, was there a, just a, an assignment to go and have complete this work? Or were you, did you get to identify what the user goal was and, and articulate how to meet that goal? Essentially, what were you asked to do? And did you actually accomplish more than what you were asked? Who was your target audience? Hiring managers love to hear a part of the whole story. And then, how did you solve that problem? How did you meet the goals of that assignment? What was your contribution? and the contribution of others. How big of a team did you work on? What was your role? What was their role? Really try to articulate what your story is about your work. And then finally, think about the metrics and how you would define the success. For example, did you get, were you able to show that page views increased, that people worked through the funnel more? Maybe you were able to do it very quickly, I know one of the questions that we frequently get asked is, 
if you're working at an agency or you're a contractor, sometimes you don't have that opportunity to see the metrics. And so one kind of mm, plotting way around some of those gaps that you might not have all the information is just calling it out explicitly and saying, these are the metrics that you would like to have in order to tell your, your story. And knowing what you're interested in measuring and how you would measure the success, even if you didn't have those measures in place, is really insightful. It helps a hiring manager understand that you've really thought through your design, your research, your writing, and it helps them understand how you became confident in your work as well. So if you don't have those metrics, because of the situation that you're in, really think about how you would tell the story, even if you have to fill in the gaps there. So obviously this passion project becomes your project for your portfolio. Really, truly, you have the opportunity to focus on your passion because you're telling your whole story right there. What's really important is that the reason you start out with your passion projects is because that's the primary thing in your portfolio. Do you think about it being above the fold or the thing that is the foundation? It is what you are projecting to the world as your superpower and your capability. So really think about how to tell that story. And if you've got other stories to tell, you can follow that same pattern of the title and the goals and the metrics for other projects as well. It's really super critical that you have one passion project that you are really proud of and can speak to throughout the interview process. So then the last step here is really publishing your portfolio. A couple hints. So how do you protect proprietary work? This is a question we get asked all the time. Many folks are working on efforts where they don't actually own the design. And so you want to make sure that when you are presenting your portfolio, maybe it's online, you protect it by potentially putting a password, password protecting it. But you also have to recognize when you do that and you send a link out to your portfolio, that user who's trying to understand and get a sense of your expertise has to go through that added step as well. So be a little cautious about how you protect that work, if you're going to choose to do a password or not, or if there's a way to actually blur out um, who, the, who the client was or who the company was. Or also think about if there's other ways to describe the work that keeps the company protected. I will tell you that hiring managers really appreciate that you take the diligence to protect your previous employer's work. It's really important for them to understand that you will do the same if they were to hire you as well. So take that extra step to make sure that you're not uh, including things that maybe haven't been publicly shared that are still in the development process. I'll tell you from experience that there have been times when I have seen things in a portfolio review that hadn't launched yet, and it made me nervous to think about hiring that person if they were willing to be that kind of deceptive of their, their current employer. So be cautious about that proprietary work. And then really think about how you will project and demonstrate your skills in how you build out and publish your portfolio. So if your passion project is all about web development or front-end development and you use someone else's template, you're not really conveying your greatest expertise. If that's really what you want to convey, make sure that your portfolio demonstrates that as well. And it probably goes without saying that if you're a visual designer, your portfolio better look really visually appealing. If you're a researcher, you better know how to make your portfolio very persuasive because a manager is going to want to know that you can persuade people to fix problems or to consider the end user 
right? When you have research results. It's the same with a portfolio. Try to make sure that it, it, it really reflects your skills. So then after that five-step process, you're done, right? Everything's come together. You've got your, your master passion project. You've published it and you're done. Well, wrong. That's only the first steps. And you'll have to tune in to the next section to find out why that is wrong.